Hello everyone. In this video, we'll talk about phospholipids, uh, especially the membrane phospholipid. So we know that plasma membrane of all the biological cells are composed of majorly phospholipids. And these phospholipids look somehow like this, which have a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. The hydrophilic head is made up of glycerol and phosphate residue with a charged group and that is why it is hydrophilic and polar whereas the tail is made up of saturated or unsaturated fatty acids. So this is the overall structure of a phospholipid in the plasma membrane. Now let me tell you in the phospholipid the R part designated here could be different. It could be serine, choline, ethanolamine and various different groups and let me tell you that these phospholipids can be obtained via diet. Now other than that many of these membrane phospholipids can be synthesized in the body as well. So we would learn about both. But first we should understand that the distribution of these plasma phospholipids are heterogeneous. For example, if we uh, take uh, sphingomyelin or phosphatidylcholine, they are generally present in the exoplasmic site. That means the site which is facing towards the site uh, towards the outer part of the cell. Whereas phosphatidylserine or ethanolamine are generally found in the cytosolic site. So they have different type of distribution in the membrane. Now forget about one particular cell. If we talk about different cell types, we would have different proportions of phospholipids present in their membrane. Just to give you an example, you have a neuron and you have an epithelial cell. If we look at their membrane, we would understand the proportion of phospholipids that are present. They might have same types of phospholipids. They might have phosphatidylcholine, serine, ethanolamine, etc. But the relative proportion of all these phospholipids could be very different. Now let's dive deep into one particular cell. Let's say an epithelial cell. Now in this epithelial cell, there is phospholipid membrane on the outer side. There would be membrane of endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, lysosome, or let's say you have a peroxisome. Now if you really analyze all of these membranes carefully, one would notice that the degree of these phospho presence of these phospholipids, that means the proportion of phosphatidylcholine, ethanolamine or serine is very different in different type of membrane and the relative proportion is also different. So what we understood that these phospholipids are distributed in a heterogeneous fashion and their distribution depends upon cell type and even inside the cell in different organelles they would have a different proportion. Now we can broadly classify these phospholipids as phosphoglycerides when the alcohol part of these are glycerol. So you can see in phosphatidylethanolamine, serine or in choline all the cases the, the alcohol part is glycerol and the difference lies in the R group. For example, if you notice in phosphatidylcholine versus serine, the R group is different. Now, not only phosphoglycerides, there could be other type of phospholipids which could be present, which are known as phosphosphingolipids. In this phosphosphingolipids, the alcohol part would be sphingosine, which is a long chain alcohol. Instead of glycerol, the alcohol part is sphingosine. Now, the other parts could be the same. So you might have a phosphate group, a choline attachment, and you would have a fatty acid tail. But here, the difference lies in the alcohol part. And this particular species is known as sphingomyelin. So sphingomyelin is considered as a phosphosphingolipid. So it's not a phosphoglyceride but it's a phosphosphingolipid and it is rich in axons and specially found in central nervous system. Now we already summarized 
that the alcohol part of the lipid could be different glycerol or sphingosine so these sphingosine containing uh, phospholipids are known as at a sim simplest level they are known as ceramides and in the ceramides you would have fatty acid parts sphingosine and the r group now if this r group is just hydrogen then it is known as ceramide now if this r group is a glucose then it is known as glycosphingolipids so this is also sphingolipids but it has a uh, sugar molecule attached to it so this is a subdivision of glycolipids so though we were talking about phospholipids in membrane these glycolipids are also present even inside the phospholipid just to summarize we have phosphoglycerides having glycerol as the alcohol part and we have sphingolipids which have sphingosine at the as the alcohol part now the glycolipids generally contain sphingosine as the alcohol part and they have glucose residues and this glucocerebrosides which is one of the most abundant glycolipid they are generally found in central nervous system in myelinated neurons and in some glia so let us now look at the biosynthesis part of the phospholipid so inside any cell the phospholipid biosynthesis takes place in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the key enzyme that helps in this process is known as acyl transferases and there are two transferases which is known as gpat and lpat now first of all the synthesis starts from glycerol 3 phosphate which can be obtained from uh, glycolysis or glycolysis intermediates and then it combines with fatty acyl coa with the help of acyl transferase enzyme sitting in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum membrane and the first step is formation of phosphatidic acid you can see the phosphatidic acid has a rough structure of the backbone that we are talking about then a phosphatase enzyme would cleave the phosphatidic acid phosphate group and it would form diacylglycerol which is another intermediate now from the diacylglycerol there could be several transferase enzyme in this particular case choline phosphate transferase enzyme which would add phosphatidyl choline group and ultimately this would be forming the phospholipid known as lecithin so we took an example that how biosynthesis of phospholipid takes place in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rate limiting enzyme here is the acyl transferase now let me tell you lipid composition or phospholipid composition governs specialized membrane domains known as lipid rafts lipid rafts are enriched in sphingolipids and cholesterols and let me tell you that these lipid rafts are hub for signaling molecules for example it would have different uh, signaling molecules such as receptors ion channels uh, kinases associated in this domain so lipid raft which is dependent upon specific composition of phospholipids is very important for a cellular function now let me tell you that these phospholipids they not only form the membrane and form a protective bilayer but they also are important for signal transduction one example comes from g protein coupled receptor signaling where upon ligand ligand binding the g alpha q subunit would activate an enzyme known as phospholipase c phospholipase c would cleave pip2 which, which is a phosphoinoside which is a membrane phospholipid and it would be cleaved into ip3 this ip3 would bind to ip3 receptor and it would lead to calcium elevation and further downstream signaling would happen but in this example we learned that these membrane phospholipids could also have a signaling function and that is very important then we can also understand that membrane phospholipid composition can tell us about the cell's health for example if we see a normal cell versus a apoptotic cell we see that phosphatidyl serine is generally present in the inner leaflet and it is seldom present on the outer leaflet but in case of apoptotic cells phosphatidyl serine are generally found on the outer side 
and their orientation is now flipped from the inner side they are majorly now found in the outer side and this is a hallmark of a apoptosis so that is why membrane phospholipid composition or their distribution can tell us about the cellular physiology let me tell you about the fertilization process when one sperm entered the ova it changed the membrane permeability and nowadays scientists figure out that the membrane phospholipid composition also changes as a result the membrane becomes more impermeable to a second sperm and that is how polyspermy is prevented and this is really astonishing that how membrane property can really govern the cellular physiology now let me tell you about membrane fluidity so membrane fluidity is governed by the phospholipid composition as well so given which type of phospholipid is present in the membrane it would determine the fluidity and also apart from phospholipid composition whether there would be saturated or unsaturated phospholipid that also governs the membrane fluidity so in short we can understand so far that phospholipid composition governs so many factor in terms of plasma membrane now the biggest unanswered question that are really important to know is whether these membrane composition change in major physiological stage like when we are fasting versus we are in a fed state whether our cell has same membrane composition or different these kind of questions are still are open question in the field now also we need to understand our cell is undergoing different type of stress like stress by reactive oxygen species st thermal stress etc in those cases whether the membrane composition changes or whether the membrane composition stays same is another open question to the scientific community so in summary what we have learned in this video is what are phospholipids we classified phospholipids we looked at their structure and we also focused on the distribution of the phospholipids and what distribution of phospholipids can tell us about cellular physiology lastly we looked at or explored several unanswered question that how phospholipid can govern cellular properties so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe and if you want to join my course in an academy which is india's biggest learning platform you can use my code ep10 to get a 10% discount and do let me know in the comment how you like my videos stay tuned for the next video thank you